Okay, we're going to do a study today that might be two different, two parts. We're going to do a study, and it's a short of a long, because we're going to look at the heart in the Bible. And 830 times in the Bible, 133 times if you look at hearts as a, as a possession, in 765 verses. Now, we're not going to look at all, all the times. We're not going to look at all the verses. But heart does not appear in Amos, Micah, Habakkuk, Galatians, Titus, Philemon, 2nd and 3rd John, and Jude. The most times, 121 times in Psalms, and 78 times in Proverbs. And when we speak about heart, we're not thinking about that, that emblem that you know people draw because that's not it. That has nothing to do with nothing. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at that symbol, it is a perverted symbol of section, sexism. You see, the fact is, and let me draw it here. Let's see if I can put it on the screen. And this is a terrible drawing, but if you can see that, you see that heart? Well, you take here and here, those arrows. That's a woman's buttocks. And you know what the other side is? So if I were to take and draw me some legs, and I'm doing it terribly. If I were to draw me some legs, you get a perverted picture of that symbol. It has nothing to do with love. But, oh, we do it because the world does it. And heart, we're not talking about the physical organ. And we're going to see some things, and may I make a comment this, when we look at the heart in the Bible, yet there are some physical hearts that's inside our body that pumps blood. But that's not what we're going to look at. So we're going to take right from Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis 6, 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Almost like today. And, they, and that every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. Now look at that. The first place that heart shows up in the Bible is not the organ. And the Bible says, we're going to see run this through the, the verses as we go through, the heart has thoughts. And you thought that you thought with your brain. And yet our actions our ways come from our heart, the internal part of us. Wickedness. Wickedness in the earth. Imaginations of the thought are evil in the heart. Why are children killing children? Because the heart is wrong. Why are adulteries and divorces rampant? The heart is wrong. And you're running to psychiatry and you're running to mind-altering drugs. When the Bible says you got a heart trouble. Instead of running to a shrink, the Bible says you're to run to God. Asa, with disease in his feet, the Bible says he ran to the doctors. In great pride, the doctors can help me over God. And verse 6, it repented the Lord that he had made him man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. There's God's heart. Now, the eternal ever-living being from no, no time before and no time ever to end, the I am. Do you think that God Almighty, that's a spirit, has a heart beating in his chest? Absolutely not. Do you think that the heart of God would be, the imagination of his heart would be evil continually? Absolutely not. 
So we are separated from God by heart. Our hearts are wicked and vile. And God's heart is pure and clean and holy. So, already we begin. 8.21, Genesis 8.21. 8.21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. This is after Noah's come out the ark. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart, again, is evil again from his youth. And whether we can do it all in one video or we have to do two, we're going to see that, that, that heart of a child. God said in his heart. He didn't look down his shirt and speak to his rib cage. What came out of God, what comes out of us, what comes out of God's holiness, what comes out of our heart is wickedness. And it begins in our youth. And we cannot take care of a condition the Bible says we have when we go to a shrink, a head doctor. We need to go to a heart doctor, the one that has a pure and righteous holy heart, God, and the word of God. And I'm not saying don't go to a shrink. I'm not saying not, don't absolutely go to a psychiatrist, because there may be chemical formulas of your body that can be wrong. You may have a condition in your body where you would need a psychiatrist. But I'm saying first, seek God in prayer. I'm saying second, Talk to your pastor if he's a Bible-believing man. Say, talk with other Christians. Talk with even other unsaved, unsaved people who have the, the same thoughts, same ideas that you have. You may have a condition that you need treatment. But psychiatry today is just go run. Go see a psychiatrist. Go drink. And it may not be the head. It may be the heart. So... Let's begin off in Genesis where God created man and man developed in his sinful ways. And God says, your heart is wicked. It's abominable, even from your youth. So Genesis 17, 17. Genesis 17, 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that's 100 years old? Abraham said something that did not come out of his mouth. And God heard it, and the Holy Spirit recorded it. Have you ever in your lifetime, have you ever, ever thought of words that did not come out of your mouth, that were inside you, that come from your heart, and the Holy Spirit has recorded it? The Bible says, Jesus says, every idle word man shall speak. He shall give an account thereof. But what about the words that you don't speak? You will also be accountable. Listen, Abraham's laughing at God. Abraham's questioning God. God says, you're going to have a son, Abraham, in his heart. Am I going to have a son at this old? And the Holy Spirit recorded it. Very interesting. Chapter 20, verse 5. Genesis 20, verse 5. Said he not to me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done this. And the Lord said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of my heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffer I thee not to touch her. What's this? My heart was pure, God. The actions I took place, that man said, he lied to me. And Lord God, the, the way he answered me, the way that he, he talked to me, I did what I thought my heart was right. And God said, yeah, I know. I know he lied to you, and I know what your heart condition was. Why did I do that? 
Why are those filthy words come out of his mouth? Why does he think things like that? Why does he pick up a gun and go shooting? Because it's in your heart. Either either evil or good. It comes from the heart. It's not, you know, it's not the head. And you're not going to solve it with head medicine. And you're not going to solve it with uh, prescription drugs or over-the-counter drugs or illegal drugs. Man has a condition, and it's, it's his heart. It's his heart. And we got to get things right if we're going to do things right. We can't do things wrong and expect the fact we're going to get the right from wrong. Right? I mean... I'm looking up a verse here. This is one verse I should have already looked up and I didn't. I apologize. Probably be one. Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 17 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Genesis 6. Genesis 6. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, not a shrink. He studies the head. He don't study the heart. So, here's a man that, hey, listen, Lord, I did what I did because I thought I was innocent. And there are people with integrity in their heart, they do things because they know it's wrong. So, with that, let's go to Matthew 5, 28 real quick. Matthew 5, 28. He had Abraham's wife. Abraham and Sarai lied. Actually, I think that was Rebecca. He had a man's wife. But the man and the wife lied. She's my sister. He's my brother. So he took her, thinking, hey, she's available. And she wasn't. In Matthew 5, 28, that whosoever the words of Jesus, looking upon a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery with her uh, already in his heart. Where does adultery, where does fornication, where does sexual sins come from? It comes from the heart. And here, where we read in Genesis, Back to Genesis 20, verse 5. Where we read in Genesis, this man thought he was innocent by the words. Genesis 20. Abraham and Sarah said, hey, we're brothers and sisters. This man took Sarah thinking, hey, it's proper. And it wasn't. But there are men, the males, who will look upon a woman and lust after her through pornography, through video, through computer, through magazines, through taking a walk on a beach or whatever it can be. And no, he does not take off any clothes. Maybe clothes are already off. Though he doesn't take her into a bedroom, doesn't take her to a hotel, a motel, an inn, does not physically put his hands on her. The charge is adultery inside the wickedness of heart. Now, let me ask you, what can a psychiatrist do to get rid of adultery when God says you can be committed adultery and you have not touched physically? You have not come physically together with another woman or man. You got to confess your sins. You got to repent of your sins. You got to get right with God. You got to control your heart. Well, I can't control my thoughts. You've got to control your heart. My head can't think straight. It's not your head. It's the heart. Genesis 24. Genesis 24. So you're thinking, in, in God's thinking, of our hearts together, of a holy, righteous heart, God looks at our hearts as vile, wicked. Uh, Genesis 24, 45.
and before I had done speaking in my heart. All right, what's that? Let's go back to verse 12. Same chapter, verse 12. 45, 12. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day. When he says, I was done speaking in my heart, he was praying to God. Now, we have set forth in religion to say, we got to be on our knees. We got to face this direction. We got to hold the bead. We got to, you know, open a book for our prayers. When No. You can speak to God through your heart. And you don't even have to have other people hear you. Jesus said, go off in the prayer closet and no one has to hear you. You and God can speak. Through your hearts. And no one has to hear. You say, oh, there's no prayers in school. You can't pray in school. Yes, you can. Let me show you an illustration. Let's pretend I'm at a, at a, at a cafeteria in a school full of children. Everybody's got their trays. They're sitting down eating. Here's my tray. Here's my food. That kid can't pray in school. Yes, he can. Ready? Watch. I just prayed. And no one heard me and no one stopped me. I just asked God, you know, I don't know if God here, but as illustrate, I asked God for the food I don't have. You can pray. I can't play in the classroom. All right, here you are sitting at your desk. The teacher just hands you the test. You studied it and, and you still, you feel uh, unconcerned. You can pray to God over that. You can pick up that test and say, Lord. You can do what Hezekiah did. He took that paper, he went before the Lord, and he loaded it out from the Lord and said, here. You don't have to make a show. We have a heart-to-heart -heart communication with God, according to the servant of, of Abraham. Well, we can't pray here. We can't. You see, you want to make a big show. And Jesus rebuked those who stand on the street corner. I'm going to get my beads out. I'm going to open up my prayer book and... Our Father who art in heaven. Will you pray for the beginning of church service? And this guy gives this long, boring, 20-hour prayer that doesn't mean nothing. Hit the ceiling, bounce off the floor, hit the ceiling, bounce off the floor, and then do nothing. And yet you're driving down the road. You don't have to close your eyes. Don't close your eyes. But yet you can pray behind the wheel. And you have a whole, whole full car of people, and God can hear your prayer. You think your prayer is coming from your boom, 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 boom? I don't think so. I've had those cardiac tests. I had a few times where they thought I was having a heart attack. And while that machine's hooking me up, and you can see the thing go boom, boom, boom. I've been praying to God. It don't go boing, boing. And stop praying, boom, 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 boom. It don't do that. A shrink ain't going to fix that. But you can pray without people knowing praying, and you can pray where they don't want you to pray, and you can't pray. Daniel went to his house, opened up this window, and it was, doesn't say he prayed out loud. They just knew that Daniel did that. So Genesis uh, 27, 41. Genesis 27, 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing whereof his father blessed him. Jacob got the firstborn blessing. Say that. Should have been Esau, but Esau sold it out. But watch. And Esau said in his heart, okay, no one heard it. We already looked at that. Abraham said in his heart and laughed at God, the days of my mourning for my father at hand, and I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. Who told Rebekah? It said, he said in his heart, no one, he did not say it out loud, no one heard him. God heard. Your child, you ever sit in your room, your, your parents just gave you the, the, the beating of the daylights because you, you deserved the chastening of the rock. Oh, oh where's my bear? Oh, oh, I wish I wish they, oh, oh, I wish I'd never had them. <laughs> They're so mean. God heard you. God heard you. 
boss comes, flops, pay, flops a whole bunch of work on your dad. He says, you got an hour to do it. Oh, baby, boss, I'm going to kill. God heard you. God heard you. God heard you. I wish that preacher's long. I wish he just hurry up. I wish he just get done. Um, God heard you. God heard the murder of Esau. And Esau never murdered Jacob. Jacob died of good old age, ripe old age, with his sons there in his presence. And yet Esau is charged with murder. As a man looks upon a woman to lust after his heart, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You can also commit murder in your heart by thinking about it from your heart. How you doing? Come on, man. Have you ever looked at a man? Uh, have you look, looked at a woman? Hoo -hoo. Ever thought to kill anybody? Woman, have you ever thought about a man? Oh, that's a big hunky guy. Ever thought about killing somebody? Has your husband ever made you so mad? Oh, I'm going to kill that man. God heard it. It's a sin. Get right with God. It's from your heart. A shrink can't take care of that. Now, if, you're, if your chemicals in your body are out of whack and, and you know, Blood's not flowing through your body like it should, or whatever happens in the body, we're fearfully, wonderfully made, and you need a, a, a prescription pill that can help those things. There are, yeah, okay. There is blood, there is, I mean, there's all kinds of things that your body can go wrong. But when it comes to your heart, when it comes to sin, when it comes to your relationship with God, that God has a holy heart, and we have a vile, wicked heart, no doctor can fix that. Repenting and getting right with God and seeking God and how to. That's the way to do it. So that was Genesis. Where are we? Genesis 27. So we want Genesis 42. Genesis 42. I should find a way to mark this. Genesis 42. No, across it. no. Genesis 42. 28. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. Now, what happened is Joseph has sent his brethren back home. Go back home to dad. Here's the supply. And all their money they, they brought to pay for the food. David, I mean, David, Joseph put it back in their sack. So they opened up their sacks, and their heart failed them. And they were afraid. Oh, there's heart failure in the Bible. And it's not that physical organ yet. It can be that physical organ too here. It could be that, that, that being that's inside of you that's wicked and vile. And it's also, it can cause a physical harm on your heart. Worry and, and crisis can do your heart injustice, can make you unhealthy. And it came on fear. Fear is not good. Worry and anxiety is not good for the heart. And when you go run to that psychiatrist and your head is all messed up and he gives you medications for fear and anxiety, thinking it's your head, he's got the wrong body part. That moment you should go to prayer with your heart to God and say, God, what's wrong with me? I get those fears. I'm going through trials right now. I, I, I get fears. I get some mornings. Some mornings I don't get them. Some mornings I get them. I thought about going to get diazepam. But then I go to the Lord. I go to the Lord. And I trust in the Lord. Now, if it ever got, so, it got out of hand, what do I do? Lord, take care of me. But I run to the Lord first. So heart failure is in the Bible. They feared. <laughs> We're in trouble. Oh, Lord. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Genesis 45, 26. Genesis 45, 26. Genesis 45, 26, and it told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he's governor over the land of Egypt, and Jacob's heart fainted. Now, is Jacob sitting or standing there? His sons have come back and say, Joseph is alive, and then his heart just, <laughs> hurry 
Henry, get the pedals. No. He's in gas. He's in awe. Oh, he's what? He stepped out of himself. What is it? As the bad news of his son says that the money is back in her sash, we are thieves. Oh, your son's alive. Whoa. And we can talk to ourselves with our heart. We can pray with our heart to God. Some people say it's it's wrong to talk to yourself, and yet there are Bible characters, good Bible Christian. I'm going to Christian. Take that back. Good Bible men and women of the Bible who have talked to themselves. And maybe instead of really talking to themselves, they're talking to God heart to heart. And in some cases, they do it verbally. Now, you, you see someone going down the street and they don't have a telephone. They're just mumbling back and forth with themselves. That's a problem. They may need medical help. May. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing anything. But we can have events in our heart that, whoa, it's not always head. It may be the heart. All right, Exodus chapter 7, 14, I hope. I've got such terrible handwriting. Exodus 7, 14, I hope. And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. That's bad. I have been witnessing to my dad over 30 years. I have I got saved April 25th, 1987. April 26th, 1987. I went and witnessed my dad. I've been witnessing to him ever since. He won't get saved. He's okay. Uh, he, one time he mentioned evolution and, and goes against religion, uses Jesus' name as a cuss. His heart is hardened. Is there a thing for the heart in salvation? I think I'm safe. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I feel. Well, it's not feelings. It's not head. I said a prayer. Romans 10, 9. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Let's go by the King James Bible. Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, there's the mouth. I confess Jesus Christ when I go Saturdays and preach the word of God, the gospel. I am testifying to the people that I am saved and I am proclaiming the gospel I'm saved by. That don't save me. That's a testimony. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Look at that. The belief and salvation must come from your heart, not your head, not your lips, not your feelings, not your grandmother, not your mother, not from the water, not from church. It comes from the heart. For with the heart, God's going to explain himself, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. I just said a prayer. That may not be salvation. <coughs> Now, if you believe with your heart and then you said a prayer, there's salvation. But it's just the, mar the mouth and no heart, you're not saved. If it's a mouth and religion, you're not saved. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. There are people who are in hell. There are people who are going to hell because their heart is hardened. They will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that upkeep? Is that upbringing? Is that where you come from? Is that your family? Is that you? Is that your head? Is that it's your heart? It's your heart. And Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked that you do not want God. You do not want to be saved. You want to enlavish in your sin. So you're not going to do what God tells you to do. A man goes to hell because he will not trust in God, will not believe in God with his heart. It's a heart issue. 
Exodus 7. Exodus 7. Exodus 7. Exodus 7, verse 23. Exodus 7, 23. And Pharaoh turned, went to his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. He would not listen, did not listen, and never got right to God through Moses and Aaron, died in the Red Sea, and went to hell. Why? Because he would not listen. He would not do right. And it caused catastrophic, it caused chaos, it caused destruction in his land. Because he would not listen. He would not obey. Chapter 9, verse 35. Chapter 9, verse 35. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Wakes up in hell. What happened? You didn't do what God told you to do. And I'm sorry, there, there are Christians who are in this condition too. Lost? No, they're not lost. They had believed what God, they had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, whatever the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Their heart is hard. I can't do that. I can't witness. I can't talk to people. I can't go tell people. My family, oh, I don't want to lose. I don't want to. I can't. I won't. That's a hardened heart to the word of God. When the word of God plainly says, go in the world and preach the gospel. As the word told Pharaoh, go and let my people go. You didn't listen. What is that? That is your heart being hardened and hardening and hardening her. And when you got a hardened heart and you let it keep getting hard from, from God, it may be that God won't be able to break that heart. Now, it's not the organ in your body, is it? I mean, if your organ in your body got that hard, it'd be dead. Exodus 25, 2. So your heart can go against God because it's wicked and vile. What did Jeremiah say? He said, the heart is deceitful above all things. I don't want to do what God tells me to do. And desperately wicked. What? Who's God? Who's God? He's going to tell me what to do. Okay? 25.2. Speak unto the children of Israel that they, may, that they bring me an offering. Every man that giveth it willingly... With his heart, he shall take an offering. I'm going to give to the Lord. I'm going to record it on my IRS form. I'm going to give to the Lord because the church is watching me. I'm giving to the Lord because I have a position in the church. I'm going to give to the Lord because I paid all my debts. I've had all my thrill for the week, and this is what's left over. I, I gave to the Lord because I want people to know I'm giving to the Lord. That's all your heart. And God wants a heart. Let's see what he says about that heart. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. There he goes, preaching about money. Yeah, you got a wicked heart. You got a heart that wants to keep the money. And you know what God says? You got a heart like that. Oh, you're talking about money. Well, God wants money. The church wants money. And keep it. <gasps> I'm going to have a heart attack. I heard a preacher say keep it. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly. That's the only time that word shows up. Or of necessity, or for God loveth a cheerful giver. So when you got a preacher up at the pulpit, oh, come on, everyone, let's give, come on, come on, let's have the thermometer, let's give money, come on, come on, we're almost there, let's go, give money. God says, tell them to keep it, put it back in their pocket, because they're giving of necessity, they're giving grudgingly, because you're making them do it. If they really want to do it, you would not have to be up there, the money cheerleader. And we're not just talking about money, the wicked heart, what about your time? Oh, come on, please go to church. The Bible says, let's you forsake the assembly of the church. And come on, you want to be out here Thursday night. Oh, come on, you should come out here. Come on, come on, come, come, come on. We're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have clown rides. We're going to have face painting. We're going to have fun, fun, fun. Come to church. God says, stay home. 
Look, man, if you got to make them do it that way, God does not love it. God does not love a cheerful heart. And the fact is, the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. In order to bring them to church so they can be wicked by doing wicked things. God says, no, don't do it. If they love me, if they want to do right, as they believed in their heart on me, with their heart they will give, with their heart they will do, with their heart they will sacrifice. It's a battle between the flesh and the spirit. And you cannot be fleshy to gain the spiritness of, of Christians. It don't work. And I probably just upset a whole bunch of people because I discourage them from giving money. And I discourage them from going to church. But if you do it because you're forced, go back and write 2 Corinthians 9, 7, 100 times. Okay? And every time you write it, pray to the Lord about that verse. Because God does not want one dollar from you if you have to give it. You, you must give it. You are badgered to give it. God wants somebody to say, Lord God, this dollar is not enough. Lord, this ministry you've given me is not enough. I did not get enough tracks. Out. Oh, Lord God, why did I forget the tracks? Uh, Exodus 35. I think I said 39. Exodus 35, 5. 35.5. Take ye from among you an offering. There you go. Speak about money again. Unto the Lord. Whosoever is a willing heart, let him bring it. See, God wants a willing heart. He doesn't want the $100 dance. That's where in church, you know, they, everybody gives, gives a dollar. <laughs> And everybody gives a five dollars, and they march in a circle, and then ten dollars, and twenty dollars, and fifty dollar bill. So you get the very last person who gives the most money. And hey, look at him! God says he wants a willing heart. God says he wants somebody who puts his time, money, and effort, and no one else sees it. Go in your prayer closet. If you're gonna give, do it so no one sees you doing it. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Don't do it for poverty. Seek your treasures that are in heaven, not in this world. Come on, dude, learn your memory verse. And you get your memory verse, we will we'll give you a new Bible and Tootsie Rolls. Come on. That kid ain't going to learn the memory verse because he wants to learn it from the Lord. He's going to learn it for the Tootsie Roll. Come on, have you read Tom Sawyer? Did you read that? Tom Sawyer went and traded Bible ribbons to get the Bible so he could be a good man in front of the Judge Thatcher. Come on, people. Read the good books. Uh, okay, 3521. 3521. It's a shame they're taking Tom Sawyer out of the school. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whose spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord an offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for all his service and the holy garments. You know what that was for? That was for God's building program for the tabernacle and the outfits for the priests. And Moses did not need a, a thermometer. Moses did not need a campaign. Moses did not need to get cheerleaders. Moses did not have to. He made one announcement. This is what the Lord said for you to bring. This is what the Lord needs for you for to build this thing, and they came and they gave willingly. There it is. There's a building program, and there was no... They gave because they want to give. How's that? How's that? That's uh, 21, 35, 26. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. Ooh, I got some goats here. Let me spin it, make it whatever I have to do for the Lord to be used. Thread, whatever. Because I because I want to do it. I, I Here it is, Lord. 29. And the children of Israel brought a willing offer unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing. Did you get it? It's not, I have to. It's, I want to. I want to. For you, Lord. 35, 34. 35, 34. And he put in the heart them 
uh, excuse me, he put in the heart that he may teach both he and Holyab and the sons of Ashamak and the tribe of Dan. All right, so here's another one. I'm going to college. I'm going to prove my brain. I'm going to get a diploma. I'm going to wear a cap and gown. And I'm going to have a diploma to make my brain smart. And the Bible says here, it was in the heart to teach. God didn't give these men the wisdom, the knowledge. Look at, uh, look at 20, 36 1. And he wrought Bezizio and Aholiab. And every wise-hearted man in wisdom, Lord, put wisdom and understand to how to excuse me to know how to work all manner. The wisdom they got to work that tabernacle did not go in the head; it went in the heart. How's that? It's not brain power. It's heart. It does not look like God uses the brain because the brain back in Genesis chapter 6 said the thoughts. Wait a minute. No, it's not brain because those thoughts were the heart thoughts. There's no thought to the mind. And when you want to get to God and you want to do right with God, you want to build something from God, it can't be with your head. It's got to be with your heart. The very foundation of a man to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ from the heart. To go and give money to God, give time to God, give to God. God wants it from your heart. How's that? Uh, chapter 35, verse 35. Then has he filled with wisdom of heart. So in the Bible, the wisdom comes to the heart, not the head. So what is the problem with careers and education and the public school system? They go to your head. They don't go to your heart. That's why they kick God out in the Bible. That's the problem. You are teaching people... Not what God tells you to teach him. You are teaching something that has no relation to God. And the relation to God is that heart, and you're not teaching very far. What Jeremiah said, that the heart is deceitfully above all things. Oh, no, you're a good little kid. You can do whatever you want. You're just so wonderful. You're so terrific. That preacher in the street that preaches about sin. Oh, he's so vile. He's so wicked. Who does he think he is? He's a great help. Leviticus 19.17. Leviticus 19.17. You don't have to listen. But we're looking at the scriptures. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Let's look at this sin now. To him that knoweth to do it good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Oh, boy, we got, man, if you look at a woman, to that's adultery. Oh, I'm going to kill my brother. That's Esau. That's Esau. If thou shalt hate thy brother in thy heart, you don't have to hate him. You, you can put that, that, that crocodile tears. You can put that makeup on. You can put that pretense. Oh, wow, this is so great. And in your heart, you, you hate that person. You don't have anything to do with that person. It's in your heart. And God sees it. How's that? The words that we speak in our heart that no one hears, God hears it. We're going to be accountable. That sexual thought you have of the opposite set, no one may know, but God knows. God records it. That hatred you murder you have for the other person. No one may know. That person may not know, but God knows. What is going on in your heart and, and that Jeremiah says is wicked. God knows and God's recording. Aren't we such bigger sins than we ever thought we would be? Aren't we just terrible sins? Aren't we just terrible sinners? That the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. I'm a good person. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm so great. The heart is deceitful above all things. And that's you, buddy. 
That's a that's a heart of a black man. That's a heart of a white man. That's a heart of an Asian man. That's a heart of a male. That's a heart of a woman. That's a heart of a baby. That's a heart of an old man. That's the heart. Jewish or Gentile. Numbers 32.7. Numbers 32.7. You gotta get your heart right. Number 32.7. Ain't your brain. It's not what you think. 32.7. What can we find in the pages of a boring book of numbers? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel? Oh, Mr. Shriek, my life is so this terrible. Oh, by the things I'm thinking. Oh, I'm just so desperate. Can you get me a pill? Shriek, help me. How about, Lord God, my heart is... Oh. Lord, no one, no one's getting saved. No one's listening. They're mad at me. My fan, everyone's just against me. Lord God, and that's in the heart. Remember your heart talking to, to God? Heart to heart. When you get discouraged and people are trying to turn you away, just let your heart speak to God. I'm honest with God. You may not be. I will tell God when I'm mad with God or angry with God. Or I, I, I mean, I don't tell God. I don't think he's no. I wouldn't go that far. But God, you know, I'm going to say, I just don't feel well. Lord God, you know, this situation. A lot of times, you know, they say you don't question God. I Because... Questioning God may be to find out where I'm wrong. And if I don't ask God, I may not find out where I'm wrong. But this verse here, not for that, I want you to know that you can discourage a heart. As a Christian, you can discourage a heart of another Christian. Your heart can be discouraged. And the only one that can fix our heart is not a, uh, a cardiologist. There is no doctor for the heart conditions we're studying right now. Your pastor may be a help you. Your associate pastor, in the word of God and by prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father, through the Holy Spirit that indwells within us. That's the heart condition. Deuteronomy 4.29. Deuteronomy 4.29. For if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. And if thou seek him with all thy heart, with all thy soul. All right? So, I want to find God. Verse 39. Same chapter, verse 39. To know therefore this day, and consider in thy heart, that the Lord, he is God, in heaven above, and on the earth beneath, there is none else. All right, with this heart condition here. God, I want you. But God, I want a God that will approve and liken my sins. Lord God, I'm not an extortioner, Lord. I'm not as an adulterer. I'm not as as... This person is sitting right next to me. Lord God, you and me, we're just so great, and you're just so happy I'm here. God, I want a God for a bargain. That's a heart that's searching not for God of the Bible. That's a God that's a heart searching for a God that has what the Bible says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? When you go bargain shopping for gods for your sins, you are Jeremiah 17:9. You want a deceitful heart, you want a wicked heart, you want a deceitful God, you want a wicked God. But a man that wants God, a man that wants the truth, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And when you put your faith and belief with your heart, then your heart comes to God and you believe and you become a child of God with your heart. After the holy and righteous heart, that God is, though our hearts be wicked and vile. You got to take God with your all in your all. 
When the day I got saved, April 25th, 1987, the guy told me I was going to hell, opened up the Bible. I didn't want to go to hell. And the only thing, the only thing, the absolute only thing I did that day to get out of hell is put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And that is all. I became saved. No works. They're wicked. They're vile. Because I could have gave money and gave it with the wrong heart. I could have gave time. I could have gave it with the wrong heart. That don't save you. That don't save you. So Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 8, 14. Deuteronomy 8, 14. Then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. Here's a prideful heart. Here's an American heart. It's got pride. You can be a child of God. You can be saved. You can believe with thy heart that Jesus saved you, and you can turn that heart into how great I am instead of how great thou art. Big difference. There is a big difference between how great I am and how great thou art. Look at me. Look at our church. Look how great we are. Look at our country. Look at my job. Look at my status. Look how wonderful my heart is. No, no, no. The heart is deceitful above all things, and that's me wicked. Who can know it? You can fool your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. Ooh, you know what the stupid bumper sticker says? No fear. You got to fear God. To walk in his ways, that's Israel, to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Remember, the, remember when you thought I was talking about just money? But it's actually giving up time, doing everything. You got to do it with your heart, with all your heart. You can't do it half-hearted. Well, you see, you know, if I go on visitation, the pastor does visitation, and he's going to acknowledge me and call me my name from the pulpit. That's why I'll go. I've seen people do that. I know Christians today who have done those things. I have done it because the pastor does it. I have seen people personally, when the pastor left, they left. You're not going to fool me. I've been in enough churches to see what's going on. A full, dedicated heart will be next week, next time, whatever you do, if you're the only one, you're going to do it. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to do it because you want to do it, and you'll do it if nobody's watching you. You'll do it if nobody gives you any credit. You'll do it because you love the Lord. And outside being seriously sick or whether whatever you do, your public ministry, weather conditions, all that, if you're able to do it, and you'll do it. That's from the heart. That's from the heart. Chapter 11, verse 13. Chapter 11, verse 13. We have a few more minutes. Looks like we're going we're gonna to break off after these two verses. We'll have the heart Old Testament, and then we'll have the heart New Testament. <laughs> Looks like that was great. Chapter 11, verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. Oh, there he goes again. Your service, your salvation of your heart to God, to be rewarded by God, has to be your all. Now, what do you do something, right? You, you, you go out in the public, whatever you do, and you, may, you just don't feel well, and you just, oh, and, and, and you know, you're half there, you're not there, you, I mean, you're not feeling well, you got allergies or headaches, something like that, you do it, but your heart inside you, not your organs, not your physical, not your flesh, but your spiritual self, I'm doing it, Lord, but I'm tired, I don't feel well, I'm doing it, you're still doing it with all your heart. You 
He's still doing it. Ch uh, verse 18, same chapter. Therefore lay, uh, therefore shall ye lay up these work, uh, excuse me. Therefore shall ye lay up these, my words, in your heart. All right. Okay, class, if you memorize your scriptures next week, we will give you Tootsie Roll. We will give you applause. Everybody say, yay! And you get the ride to slide. You get the ride to swing set or whatever. You get the first choice to the playground if you memorize your verses for next week. Way! That's not going in the heart. And it's not going hard. You know, I have to memorize my verse because dad wants me to do it. Mom wants me to do it. The pastor wants me to do it. The associate pastor wants me to do it. The youth pastor wants to do it. The, the Sunday school teacher wants me to do it. That's not giving it to your heart. Lord God, I got this verse right here. I don't know what this verse means. I don't know why you had me learn this verse. But Lord, because that verse was put before me, for whatever reason, I'm going to memorize. Lord, will you help me memorize this verse? Because Lord, it will have a purpose. That's what God wants. And when you set out, Lord God, this verse right here, I, I, whatever it is, you laid it in my heart, I want to learn it because nobody knows I'm going to learn it. That's what the Lord wants. Okay, we're going to stop right now. We'll come back in part two pretty soon.